Hi, this is Pranav Goa Thakurta from Edu TV. Today, we are with an educationist with national and international fame. We have seen her being praised by Australian Education Minister and today we saw her article being praised by our Deputy Chief Minister and Education Minister of Delhi, Shri Manish Shishodhya Ji. She is none other than Ms. Amita Mallavatal. Ms. Amita Mallavatal is the principal of prestigious Springdale's school, Pusa Road, New Delhi, and the former chairperson of the National Progressive Schools Conference. She has worked in the sphere of education for over four decades. She is a recipient of the prestigious National Teacher Award 2005 from Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam and the Endeavour Award 2009-10 from the Australian government for her work in the area of Asia literacy, etc. Ms. Watal is a member of the panel of experts at the Oslo Coalition at the Noble Institute. She is on the UNESCO Committee in Geneva for Education of Peace and Human Rights. She is on the several expert committees, both nationally and internationally. Member of the Council for National Council of, of Teacher Education, member of the Executive Council of NCRT, Government of India, member of the governing body of the Central Board of Secondary Education, member of the Delhi School Education Advisory Board, Government of New Delhi, member of a committee of NCTE to re review certain regulatory functions and a lead member in the Global Leaders Education Program, a 15 country initiative, which is supported by the CBSC. Welcome back. I think uh, this is not only about what I think about uh, what will happen. I think all of us are thinking together and mostly it's important what governments think because ultimately they are the ones who are going to make the policies for, for us to open up because they know the exact situation on the ground. Having said that, there is no doubt that we will have to go forward for our economy and also for the fact that we cannot keep so many children uh, indoors um, indefinitely. So I'm sure that the government is also in its own wisdom finding ways and means and thinking about how we're going to relook at the way schooling has to be. Correct. Having said that, these particular months that we have right now, they may be called a vacation period, though it has not been formally announced. But as far as teachers and schools are concerned, this is a dilemma because a vacation is when children go out, they go for excursions, they travel, they see movies, they go to malls. As it is, they're already in a situation where you can call it a, a, a sort of a permanent vacation. Even if a vacation is declared, as teachers, we cannot give up. We have to consistently ensure that some kind of connectivity, some kind of learning takes place with children throughout these few months. Only today, there was a circular from the CBSC saying that very soon, the moment the lockdown is lifted, they will be looking at finding dates to conduct the CBSC examinations, Correct. which have been stalled across the country. Uh, in fact, the 12th grade is not given the papers. So I think even before schools open, what the governments will have to look at is how are you going to bring back such a large group of children into giving the examination? Because giving the examination here means that you have a minimum of 3,000 or 1,000, 2,000 children in centers who are going to be sit, sitting captive for three hours uh, with or without masks giving their papers. So having said that, I think it's a step-by-step -step situation. The way that the government will handle the opening of the examination centers, the coming together of teachers for evaluation will be the first step in bringing children out of their homes. The second step is the opening of the schools because we cannot, if exams are going to start, whenever they are going to start, because no dates have been told yet. At that time, schools will be occupied with the exams. So you can't have parallel children coming in because it will mean a very large group of children being in the school. Having that if the examinations can take place and they can successfully be conducted without any issues without any fright then i think probably if they if the government again thinks it in july if we're looking at coming back to school then we'd have to look at it in many different ways and means because 
I don't know whether without a vaccine, there's, be, there's going to be a complete closure of this situation. Will the hotspots remain? Will uh, there be certain areas which will still be uh, difficult to access? So again, working on all that and wondering whether we can get so many kids back, that too in the summer, because July is a hot time and children tend to sweat. And 90% of schools in India, like us, we don't have air conditioners. So the, the situation is that everybody is together, everybody is hot, a lot of hot bodies, exchange of fluids. So we have to really think as to how do we do this? So uh, in its wisdom, I'm sure we bring in lesser children into the school rooms, we declutter it, we keep sanitizing the school every time the children leave or walk in, the dispersals, uh, the departures, the, uh, the arrivals have to be looked at so that we don't have large groups coming in all together. Whether we use buses or children come on their own because buses are another area where a lot of children are uh, coming together. There are 50, 60 children in a bus. Uh, how do we look at that? Uh, you see, teachers are adults. They are spread across. But it's children who are more closer. That uh, who, you know. So whether it's the corridors, whether it's the canteen areas, whether it's is uh, the, the parks or the football grounds, wherever children converge, will we just let it be as it was earlier or will there be a certain procedure, a certain protocol in place which will uh, enable us to sort of uh, declutter the school, decongest it from having so many pe people. The fact that a lot of work would have not been done, uh, there would have been no formal learning Right now, the online learning is, in a sense, however good it may be, a little arbitrary, a little ad hoc, because everybody's trying their bit. But then everybody may not have the wherewithal for it. And are we really testing children? We're not being able to test children. We're not being able to access it. So I think the most important thing is how are we looking at children coming back? And even if they come back, are we immediately going to get them packed into a classroom of 40, 45 children? and in other schools maybe more? Are we going to immediately get back into sitting and doing formal conventional studies and then immediately start the testing? I mean, these are all things we have to look at because if children come in in the month of July, we suddenly can't start testing them with terminals in September because how much of content delivery would they have really understood or internalized? So this has to be a very well thought of situation as to how we're going to bring schools back. And I think all over the world, people are looking at this.